Welcome to the Matching Ideas with Resources Networking Podcast, sponsored by GLM Financial, an accounting firm in Schaumburg focusing on providing professional accounting and business services to small and medium-sized companies throughout the Chicagoland area. I'm Tom Ghosh, business strategist with GLM. Today I'm talking with Joe Minogue, Vice President of Commercial Banking at First Midwest Bank. Joe and I will not only talk about commercial banking and some unique ways he and his bank can get you financing, he also talks about how they protect you from fraud. I've been in commercial lending of some sort since 1994. I started off lending semi-trucks and trailers for a large uh, firm called The Associates, okay. old-time finance companies, and then worked my way through uh, Ford Commercial Credit, worked with companies, uh, some of the larger companies in town, and mm-hmm. then uh, decided to go into the banking side. And um, started with U.S. Bank and worked my way to private and now First Midwest. Yeah, cool. And the uh, <coughs> um, the bank, you know, the reason I chose First Midwest, it's local. Yeah. It's headquartered here. It's publicly traded, so anybody can check out it anytime they want, make yeah. sure it's doing well. Um, and it's growing very quickly, so they're always looking for people to acquire or companies to acquire, banks to acquire, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have plenty of money to lend. So yeah. when you're a commercial banker, that's what you want is a lot of money to lend. Yeah, um, it's hard to be a commercial banker and then say, except we don't do this and we can't do that, and your industry we don't do. And Yes, um, yeah. And that's, you know, um, every bank has industries they're better at, mm-hmm. industries they're not very good at. Um, and that kind of goes along with who your banker is. So you, you could go to some of the larger banks that are national banks out there, and their right. people aren't uh, as trained, and you know they they get moved up quickly through their ranks, and and you get some of the promises, things that maybe they can't do, or they don't even know they can't do, right. and because uh, uh, they don't realize the bank isn't good at that. Right. And, and so that's where a professional banker really is important. So tell me about how what makes you different. Uh, probably the number one thing that makes me different is my ability to review their financial statements and mm-hmm. give them an answer or a guidance very quickly. Uh, and sometimes that answer is no, uh, but it's no with here's how we can get you there. Right. Um, yeah. It, or it's uh, I just dealt with one. It, it was uh, I have a prepay. Well, let me look at your your thing and I'll tell you what your prepay says. And then we sit there and show them their prepay and. I break it out for them and say, here's your prepay. I'm not telling you, you know, that you should pay that prepay, but here's what rates are going to be doing. Um, and then probably the, the biggest difference is that I've lent on all different areas. So there's really nothing that you can't say you're going to buy or need to buy that I can't tell you what we're going to advance on it, what the best way to do it is. Mm-hmm. Um, First Midwest is one of the only uh, banks in the area that owns its own leasing company, Equipment and Finance Company. Mm-hmm. So um, we can, I just did a guy who needed a 100% finance loan and he wanted it approved right away because he needed to order the machine. So we did 100%, he got approval in a couple days, no financials, done, the machine's ordered. Um, and, and the bank will fund, part as the construction of the machine's going, the bank will fund that and at the end he'll uh, have a 100% financing machine in return. He said, well, i got to give you all my banking business because you did such a great job. So Perfect. Yeah, so it worked out great for me. The uh, the other separation of me is who I know. So if I can't do something or if I see something that's wrong with um, your financials, then I go one way or the other. I can refer you to an accounting firm that you know, like GLM that mm-hmm. has consultants that can help you and, and accountants that understand your industry. Or I can refer you to another banker because there, like I said when we started, there are things banks can't do. Sure, there are things I can't do that other banks can't do, uh, or there are people in my bank that can do it. Right. So I'll. Well, bring there's that also there. alternative financing that you can. Yeah. Do, you do different things. Yeah, and you know, you know, and I know that there are hard money lenders out there, and some people only need that for nine months. Right. They're not bankable today, but they are bankable nine months. I'm doing a loan for a guy right now who is uh, exporting all his all his stuff gets exported, all of it. So can't factor it because the factory companies want you to have localized uh, business. Right. Can't insure it because the business that's buying isn't here, it is overseas, so it's not like you can insure the receipt. 
you can, but it's difficult. Right. Um, and banks don't want to lend on assets or accounts receivable that are from a foreign entity. So how do you get around it? You do an SBA export line of credit. You can do it up to nine hundred thousand mm-hmm. uh, dollars. Yeah, nine hundred thousand dollars. And the client can use all of that inventory and accounts receivable at, towards their line of credit. Nice. So uh, there's just knowing the industry and knowing the products and been doing this for a while. Yeah. Helps, you know. um, the uh, the bank has, I guess I mentioned this, but the bank has really no excluded industries. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a ton of trucking companies, even though everybody seems to hate trucking companies. Um, we have uh, a bunch of, you know, we like the same things everybody else likes too. We love manufacturers, we love wholesalers, we love professionals. Um, and then we love all the other companies that are making money and want to partner. The other side of this is that I do not, uh, my clients do not leave my portfolio. So when I bring a client on the books, they are my client until the day they don't want to be my client anymore. Um, which helps. Uh, because I know their financials and their business as well as they do. I meet with them once a quarter. I prefer to meet with them once a year with their account so that we can go over together the plan for the next year. So I try to meet with all my clients in December and ask their cl- their, attor- their uh, attorney and their accountant to attend so that we can get an idea. Um, one of the things that companies know but don't tell you is how often they are going to or when they're going to buy equipment. So it's December, I'm gonna buy, I need to buy three pieces of equipment next year. Okay, great. Do you have the revenue to support it now? What revenue are you gonna get? There's such a thing called a guidance line where you can uh, set up a line of credit and fund each piece of equipment off the line. It doesn't turn out until the last piece gets funded. Hmm. But you don't have to reapply to underwriting for every piece of equipment. You can literally just say, yeah, we got, a million dollar guidance line, you're buying three pieces of equipment, 300000 one in January, one in March, and one in December. And in December, we turn the whole loan out and uh, the client starts paying us back. Nice. It's interest only until that happens. So there's uh, there's a lot of that stuff that you just you don't understand until you, you're involved in it every right. single day. And uh, and that's the key for us is, is getting the clients and getting that relationship. And then from there, we can kind of expand it. Very cool. Anything you know, you the key to this this is is uh, where where we separate ourselves from some of the other banks. You've got some that, that call themselves community banks, and they're in mm-hmm. your community. You have others that call, call themselves commercial banks, and they're they're a commercial bank. Uh, we call ourselves you know a uh, a community bank as well uh, with a commercial feel, uh, but the difference is we have over 100 locations in the Chicagoland area, mm-hmm. growing every single day, bought two banks in the last four months, um, and we'll probably continue to buy banks as the market consolidates. Um, in the meantime, we were trying to find new locations, so we're, we realized that we didn't have a location in Naperville, and we, we're building one now. <laughs> you believe that? Right now. So we're building one in Naperville now, and, uh, and you know, but you can't find a bank that's building a bank right now. It's amazing. But, yeah. Uh, so we're trying to fill those holes in because there wasn't a bank we could buy there, so yeah. it's easier to build. Um, and you know, to give you an idea, here's here's the two deals that I'll tell you about that are examples of what we do. Perfect. We had a client come to us and want to build a, uh, a fitness club. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're an existing client. Uh, they want to build a fitness club. The fitness club was nineteen million dollars for the land and construction. We approved the loan. They did the under. They did the appraisal. And they found out that the uh, con or no, they did the appraisal. Everything was fine. They found out later that the concrete prices have gone up dramatically in the last year. So now they needed a twenty-four million dollar loan, not a nineteen million dollar loan. So uh, our twenty-four, yeah, twenty-four million dollar project. We uh, were able to raise our loan amount to offset it and get them back up to eighty percent of the new cost. Even though the appraisal can't figure in the cost of the concrete, because the appraisal goes against existing buildings. Sure. So we were able to find a way to get that done. That's I, awesome. Yeah, I had a second client that truly needed to refinance their building. Uh, they were paying a high interest rate, even though they refinanced three years ago. Uh, everybody thinks, "Oh, I refinanced three years ago, I'm fine." Well, their rate three years ago was five and a half percent. 
rates are down in the high threes right now. Yeah. So they uh, they they should refinance. They've got a large loan. And it's wasted money. So uh, and they can use that money for growth. So uh, we started trying to do the the uh, refinance, and their appraisal came in light. So we did uh, what's called an airball loan, and just took some of that loan value off of the building, hmm. put it as an airball loan, amortize it over a little quicker period, and we could do that all day long if the client makes sense. So they're going to pay this airball loan over five years. We stretch out the amortization on the building a little bit so that their payment's still where they need it to be, but they've paid down that airball and got us in the right position in a shorter period of time. Interesting. Yeah, so it, it literally is listening to our client and finding a way to fit the need that they have. And if they're a good client, they're willing to partner with us by moving their deposits and everything over to the bank, we will stand up for them any way we can. How, how difficult is that to, to change everything over? The deposits? Yeah, it, deposits. It's become so easy. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah the, the funny thing about it is that everybody's worried about the electronic side of things. Right, that's what I was and thinking. That's actually made it easier. Think okay. about the old days where the checkbooks, they have to write out all these checks and then you have to order checks and, and you wouldn't know when to move your money over to get those checks covered. Now you can move that money in one day and you can change all your uh, auto withdrawals in one day. So it's actually much easier. We okay. have a dedicated treasury management person that I'm going out this afternoon with that we're going to, we walk in and by the time we're done, their check scanner will be changed over and their wire instructions will be changed over and we'll walk out the door with them fully changed. Wow, okay. Yeah. That's good to know because, yeah, it does, it seems like it is, it can't be scary. Yeah. Yeah, I know that, you know, changing accountants is scary too. Well, they've been doing my stuff for 20 years and there's 20 years of stuff somewhere, yeah, and now yeah. we're going to switch over to you. What do you need? Yeah. You know, and, and the, it does get scary. We just had to deal with that yesterday. Um, and yeah. accountants don't like letting go of the, the, the you know, that's their, uh, you know, that's their stuff, man. Yeah. But if you think about it, even in that world, technology has made it easier to change mm -hmm. because the, the accountant sends you an electronic copy, a digital copy of your returns. And you're all set. Yeah, you get a, you get digital copies of any of your statements, and boom, you're same ready to go. Same thing with the QuickBooks. It's just, yeah, it's yeah. the same thing with this. The, the one area I tell you that, that scares me in banking is fraud. So yeah. fraud is the hot button. Um, I actually just had my credit card uh, taken, uh, yeah. not taken, but captured, and uh, they spent 3600 bucks in 24 hours. Wow. That's amazing, yeah. They're very good at it. Yeah. The, uh, uh, and so what I'd tell you is if you have anybody that sends a wire or writes a check, so they're on every single check is your account number, your routing number, your address, your signature. So if they send a check in the mail, well, I strongly suggest they not. They should ACH everything. But that, if that check gets stolen, somebody can go into Staples tomorrow and get another check that looks like yours and start printing checks or any other store. So the uh, so if you, you want to watch that, if you send out instructions to people on your invoices, and at the bottom it says, please remit payment to, it's got your account number and your routing number. They know your address and your business name. The only thing they don't have is your signature. So uh, it's very easy for them to do it. And it's not the owner of the business you got to worry about. It's the shipping and receiving clerk. It's sure. the guy that stole the mail. It's anybody. So uh, what we've tried to set people up in is uh, some accounts and capture data, whether they QuickBooks will upload information right into our system so we know whether or not that check has actually been issued mm -hmm. for the amount. Uh, and then, or you could do uh, things like zero balance accounts, which means the only thing that can happen in that account is a deposit comes in. Right. And when the deposit comes in, it immediately routes it to a checking account. Okay. And then if somebody writes a check or tries to ACH money or wire money out of that account, it doesn't have a balance. Right. It will not allow them to do it. It won't bounce it. It won't overdraft it. It just it bounces it. It doesn't overdraft. So that's a zero balance account, and it protects them. So their actual checking account number is here, but on everything it says this one. That's good. So, yeah, so that's a great protection device, and it's very simple for them to do. It, listen, it costs a couple bucks a month. It's worth it. Sure, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, definitely. it's definitely worth it. Okay. I, in fact, I just uh, I sat with a guy. They've got plenty of money in the bank. Uh, we just transferred over for another bank in town here, uh, and 
when we sat with them, they wanted to every night they were they had more than two hundred fifty thousand in the bank, and they wanted to be very protective because some of that money is owed out. Uh, so we found a product that would overnight every single night secure that money for them, so they could keep it all in one account. And uh, but that product costs a hundred bucks a month. So you know we were sitting there, and I said, but why are you wiring out four times a month? And they said, well, that's how we do payroll to the, the four guys that are out there. Mm-hmm. There's two guys twice a month. And I said, well, can't you just ACH them? You know what they're going to get paid, right? And I said, yeah. I said, well, the wire costs you $35 a month. The ACH costs you 18 cents. So we saved them more on not wiring. Right. And, and they're literally paying nothing now for the product that solved their issue, and they can sleep at night. Interesting. Yeah. So cool. it's just kind of looking through their financials and getting a better idea of what they're doing and their bank statements to make sure what they're doing. Uh, the rest of the of this of this flyer talks about companies that we've done business with. It talks about how long we've been in business. We started in 1940. We're always going to be Chicago based. Uh, we are a huge. We are the largest ag lender in the state of Illinois, um, and we're one of the largest uh, uh, private wealth uh, banks in the state of Illinois. Right. Basically, you know. very good. Well, thank you for being a, a part of this today, and uh, I actually learned a lot and uh, hope to be able to you know, provide you some business, especially you opened my eyes on a few things, especially that fraud thing. So yeah. uh, thanks again for coming. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Matching Ideas with Resources podcast sponsored by GLM Financial. I'm Tom Ghosh, business strategist with GLM, steering direction, matching ideas with resources.